I'm your host, Kim Rankins. Our issue is homelessness, and our topic is homeless veterans. Joining me are Jim Rudisell, pastor and assistant director of Fig Haven, and his gorgeous wife, Mary Rudisell, director of Fig Tree Haven, which is a nonprofit organization. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank, Thank you, Kim. you. We're talking about homeless veterans. Now, certainly when we think of a veteran, a veteran is a person who, you know, we've got decorated combat veterans, we've got heroes. They're heroes who risk their lives for us in combat. It's so hard to think of these people being forced to live outside under bridges in the in the cold, in the rain. Is that true? Do we have a lot of homeless veterans here in our area? It's absolutely true, Kim. And I think it's been covered up a bit, and people tend to deny it, and they don't want to believe it's happened. But I'm an ex-military officer, and I know a vet when I meet one, and I know how to check them out. And right here in the Tidewater area, Virginia Beach, we have a lot of vets. We have people that are camps just full of folks. Over in Hampton, there's a especially large number because we have the Hampton VA Center. And so I go into the camps. I follow the vets to see where they live. And I see their little, it looks like a Vietnam setup. Their, their little tents covered with branches. They might be hidden away and all. But I see their bottles with medicines from the VA. I've seen their medals. One man has two bronze stars. And it's... It was shocking to me to find out that we have vets, that many of them, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. Mary, we were yesterday over in Hampton by the marina, and the three homeless people, we asked them, all were vets. One was a Navy guy, one was an Air Force guy, and one was an Army guy. And so there's a lot of vets out there. What about the Veterans Administration? Aren't they helping to take care of the veterans? They say they are, and they'll help some vets, but we work only with the people that live under the bridges because we'll actually go under the bridges and take food and other stuff. And so we see people that are living under the bridges in the camps set up, and sometimes we stay there with them. And so these vets have fallen through the crack. Now, maybe there's 1,000 or 10,000 or 50,000 vets that get different kind of benefits. 100% of the vets here in Tidewater that I see that are a lot of them in life-threatening circumstances, some who have died, they are the exception, not the rule. So uh, I'm especially, I guess, upset about it because all the vets that I hang out with are outside the system. Let me give you an example. A person could have spent uh, a month or two in the military got out and he would be qualified for certain VA benefits and I know vets like that. I have a friend who here in Virginia Beach not too far from the studio near where we're sitting right now spent three tours in Vietnam and he was with a very powerful force of military in Vietnam. In his third tour of, he got tired of dropping bombs on women and children in pajamas and he cracked up a little bit and they kicked him out of the military after spending three full tours in Vietnam. And so now he gets no benefits because he got a bad conduct discharge from refusing to participate in his third tour in Vietnam. So uh, I know a lot of other vets that got addicted to alcohol or drugs while in Vietnam. I'm a Vietnam era veteran. While in Vietnam, well, they're still alcoholics. They still can't sleep at night. I'll see them under the bridge. They can't sleep unless they get about half drunk because they have nightmares of what happened to them in Vietnam. So because they've fallen through the cracks, then they're not able to go and get the help they may need mentally, physically, um, for their addictions? Well, this is a shock to most people. If you get a DUI or uh, say if you get a felony for any reason, you lose all your benefits. So you can be a decorated hero. Carlos Hathcock, famous Marine sniper, world famous, most famous sniper in the world, is, lived here in Virginia Beach. He was discharged from the uh, Marine Corps with just a few months left. So, you know, it's, it's surprising. There's a, a dozen reasons why a person can lose all their VA benefits. Another man we were talking to yesterday 
He's over in Hampton. He's under a bridge. I could take you there right now. He's a vet of the Air Force. He got uh, diabetes wounds. He went to the VA, caught strep, got a staph infection. I went over there. Mary and I looked at his <coughs> bandage, looked at his leg, saw the wounds. Went back the next week. There are maggots eating his leg. Oh, my goodness. He went back over. They put him in the ER for a week, and they sent him home. Well, sent him home means he's homeless. So he's back out under the bridges in the filth, flies flying from the dung where they have to go to the bathroom under the bridge over to him, and he's a vet. Eight years in the Air Force. He gets 10% disability. That's $123 a month to live on. You can't live anywhere for $123 a month. Can't do it. Can't do it. Now, Mary, certainly um, both you and Pastor Jim have a heart and a passion for working with the homeless. What can we do? What can our viewers do to help you in your efforts? Do you need volunteers to assist you with helping our homeless veterans and those who may not be veterans but who are unfortunately living in, uh, in very unfortunate circumstances right now? Yes, yes, we could use volunteers. We are putting together survival backpacks for them too because they, you know, they do not have their military backpacks that they did have. So, um, and the things that we put in them would help them to survive out in the woods and wherever they, um, wherever they live. Um, there are dozens of things that volunteers could do because it's such a large problem. It, from fixing food to putting mm -hmm. together uh, special little packages to go out and visit people and see what they need. A lot of times people just need a ride to a, an appointment or a doctor's office or want to go on a job interview or they need a bicycle. There's just... Uh, some people have lost their ID cards. Some people have had their ID cards confiscated by the police because their driver's license was expired. And once someone takes your driver's license, it is almost impossible. It can take a couple of years for you to get a birth certificate if you don't have any form of ID since 9-11. So it's, there's dozens of things. If we had 100 volunteers, if retired people would stop playing golf and start helping their neighbor, we could use everybody. We desperately need help. 